Okay, I'm looking to cover three things, and everything will revolve around uh, basically the SDR Play uh, hardware I have here, the RSP1 Alpha and the, uh, the Duo. I'm going to focus on the RSP1 Alpha for this video, though. We'll look at using uh, SigDigger. We'll figure out a way to get information out of SigDigger over into GNU Radio, because I don't think that there is a GNU Radio block yet for the newer API uh, in SDR Play. And then finally, we'll look at uh, another program which is not installed, doesn't take but uh, just a few minutes to install it, Hack TV, which we'll use to generate some analog TV and then uh, demodulate it with uh, the SDR Play equipment. So let's jump right in here. We know that uh, SigDigger is available in here. It uh, will look up and see our hardware using the, the SOAPI modules. If, if uh, you had a problem with SDR Play uh, and it didn't show up under there, you could restart the SDR Play service. I've had to, to do that a couple times when uh, I've unplugged and plugged back in the radio multiple times. Um, that'll usually clear things up. You would then just uh, close out and reopen Sig Digger or refresh the devices. Uh, you could also, if it's hanging on restarting the SDR Play service, you could find it, uh, the service using top and then kill uh, whatever associated number with that. And here would be 4389, and then restart, and you should be perfectly fine. So let's just leave it at the default settings here. You can see the sample rate and the bandwidth is already set. We've got our RSP1 Alpha. Uh, one thing I will point out, my gain settings are going to look a little different than what's in the ISO, and that's because I tried out the newer, uh, I think it was just the other night, SOPI SDR Play uh, patches that were uh, pushed out and changed some settings in the gain. But we'll just try it with uh, the way it is right now. Uh, let's kick it over to something FM here. And I'm not sure uh, what all these settings with the new new patches uh, do. I'm still getting used to all these advanced uh, settings that the SDR Play equipment has. So, uh, but what I want to show is let's just leave it running like this. And uh, how do we get this information out of here into GNU Radio? Well, let me let me stop that for a second. Let's open up GNU Radio Companion. And this was actually a pretty unique feature of SigDigger. And since we don't have the GNU radio block yet that I know of for the newer API, this was a way uh, uh, around that. So look up uh, TCP source. You can use a little magnifying glass here. Uh, look, pull in a throttle. And then a QT. Let's do GUI sync. Tie these together and double left click on the TCP source. Let's change this to 40404. And there's a reason why that's uh, the default in SigDigger. Save the flow graph. We'll go ahead and execute that flow graph. And so that's running in the background. We'll pop over here. We will run this again. Let's just uh, left click anywhere here just to show you would uh, you know pick a signal of interest, uh, widen your uh, filter there. Come down here on the inspection tab and let's do the FSK inspector. Open up the inspector. You can set the baud rate. If you look over here you'll see it says start. We'll start left click spectrum Click on power spectrum, and now essentially I took this out of one of the, the Sig Digger uh, developers' YouTube page, so you can look up his page and see how I came up with this, uh, and to find out more information. But I just thought this was pretty interesting for SDR Play and a way around getting uh, output into GNU Radio. So you can see the 40404 local host, and what we're going to do is is network forward this information. Moment I hit forward, now we've got 
GNU Radio has popped up, and we can see the same information is now. So now technically we've got our SDR Play equipment feeding into GNU Radio. Okay, so that's one thing I wanted to show. I'd be interested to see what everyone comes up with as far as additional flow graphs and uh, blocks of uh, importing this information. I don't know if it would be possible to further refine. And I've seen this a couple times too where uh, you know the forwarding has uh, you know pops up with this network forwarding was interrupted. That's because I closed out the GE radio um, before I uh, stopped this here on this end. So that's all that's basically telling me. Okay, so let's stop Sig Digger and let's get set up with something else here. Let's close out a GE radio. Let's take a look at Hack TV, analog TV transmitter for the Hack RF. Now I'm going to go ahead. Copy this link here. I just throw it in the user source. You can put it wherever you want. But I want to clone this to my local machine here. Very small uh, amount of uh, files that are added. You can see that uh, some prerequisites are needed, but you can also see what it does uh, and what it's able to transmit here or generate POW NTSC. You can, um, <clears throat> excuse me, you can transmit with the HackRF. Uh, you can do the uh, FL2K, the, those VGA adapters that someone mentioned something about on the YouTube page, and then anything pretty much supported with SOAPI SDR. But we do need some requirements uh, pre-installed. Do an app get update first, of course, and then uh, we would install these uh, prerequisites here, which I have already done, should have everything I need. Okay, if we change into our hack TV directory, you just need a sudo make, or make depending on where you've stuck it. When that finishes, we'll do a sudo make install, and then we can see the uh, features that this has and all the different uh, video types that, that it supports. Uh, what I want to focus on is the NTSC FM right here. So I have the yep, I have the HackRF plugged in. And let's see, I want to take a look at uh, transmitting, uh, let me think, yep, okay, thought so. Okay, so Hack TV, I've got my dash F for the frequency in hertz, I'll do 915 megahertz, my uh, format, and then the for the power out on the HackRF, and then test is a file that comes with it pre-built in. I just want to look and see if we can demodulate that with the SDR play equipment and at least uh, see something recognizable uh, being broadcast. So let me think. So of course, I'm just going to throw out that warning. Although 915 or so is uh, uh, pretty much unlicensed band here, um, there's still a lot of caveats when you're uh, transmitting anything, especially in the ISN band, so uh, make sure you take the appropriate precautions, whether it's uh, using uh, cable and tying the two devices together or shielding. Uh, I, I've got that set up. Um, actually, hang on. Now, behind me here, so uh, let's see. So we're going to go ahead. We've got the Hack RF going. I'm going to close out my inspector tab here. I'll come back over to the radio spectrum. Turn my radio back on. Actually, I'm going to stop it for a second. Let's bump up our uh, sample rate and the bandwidth here. Come over to source. And we'll say, no, I don't want to decimate it down. We'll leave it as is. Let's come up here to 9. 15, I can see, I 
can see what's being broadcast by the HackRF. And just to show you, if I were to cancel this, there we go. So I'll bring it back on. But what I want to do is, let's see. I'm going to bring, I'm going to center it here, and I'm going to open up the filter here to try and capture. Actually, let's let's stop for a second here. Let me see. We'll go up to 10. All right, there we go. So we're using everything the S, uh, RSP one alpha has in terms of its 10 megahertz. Let's, let's try and get all this in the window here. Okay, once we do that, we'll click our inspection tab. This time we want to do amplitude shift key, open up the inspector. We want to take our bits per sample up to the max of eight. Let's go ahead and start. This time we'll left click and hold and try and capture the leftmost uh, little bump there over to where it ends here. Uncheck fit to window. We'll click record and let's see if we can get something recognizable. It looks like it's okay. So right there. So we can see what's being transmitted. You can see the hack TV sample there. So that's just uh, another use of, uh, in this case, the SDR play equipment and uh, some of the advanced features of SigDigger. I'm really excited about using uh, the equipment together. Um, look forward to in the future this, uh, and now I know this uh, simple display window or the simple stream is meant for something else. This just happens to be uh, something that it can provide. Uh, be look forward to having some additional features there. So, all right, so that kind of covers three things there, all using uh, essentially the SDR play equipment to receive and demodulate. So, hope you enjoy.